Thanks a lot. I'm guessing that a lot of people in this audience have seen at least one of Sir Ken Robinson's TED Talks. In 2006, he told us that the fear of failure is uh, greatly impacting creativity in our schools. For basically our kids' entire education, they're told that in order to receive an A, they need to perform at the level of about 90% success. And that level of performance is perfectly fine if the kind of problems that the students are solving are algorithmic kind of problems, problems that can be broken down into a recipe, problems that are plug and chug. All that we're really doing is testing the student's ability to memorize how to solve the problem and paying attention to some details. But Dan Pink, another TED Talker that many of you might be familiar with, has told us that algorithmic problems are last century's problems. Computers solve those problems much better than humans do. And in fact, what we really need to be doing is teaching our students how to solve the kinds of problems that are 21st century problems, and those are the more complex, what Dan Ping calls, heuristic kinds of problems. These kinds of problems require basically logical guesswork. They're complex problems, they're multifaceted, and they really demand uh, drawing upon all resources that one has in front of them. But that's not the kind of problem that we can expect our students to perform at the 90% level, because naturally, if you're doing logical guesswork, you're going to be making some mistakes. What I want to tell you about uh, this afternoon is really what has gone on in my class and how we've tried to equip our students to solve some of these more complex, real-world kind of problems. Uh, one thing I need to tell you is that my college class is a, uh, a class full of students that would probably fill this auditorium. So whatever we do to make changes, we've got to be able to deal with the scale that would be in this room. And the second thing is, of course, we face times of limited resources, so we don't just have an infinite number of people that we can bring on and throw at this problem. What we have done is, uh, one thing, is to, to remove ourselves from the lecture hall. So, in fact, um, this is where I used to lecture. I used to stand in front of the center of that stage, but I no longer do that because I feel like the message that I could deliver, that monologue that I would be delivering to my students, is really better delivered over the Internet. We used to ask our students to go home and read the textbooks. I don't know that really the students ever did read the textbooks. <laughs> but now we ask them to go home and, and listen to our webcast because that's really where the lecture material is going to be found. We never in that class um, actually use the time to solve problems, and that's what we do right now. We have actually uh, taken the time that used to be spent here, and instead we use it uh, to solve problems with students virtually. Rather than standing in front of the room, we're the coaches, my TAs and myself, that stand along the sideline, guiding our students along the way, helping them uh, strategize, helping them, uh, encouraging them, making them more confident in their approach to solving problems. The other thing I need to tell you about my classroom is that it's a classroom of organic chemists. And what does that mean to you? Well, basically, these are the pre-professionals. These are the students that will become your doctors. They'll become your uh, uh, nurses. They'll become your dentists, your veterinarians, and so on and so forth. What kind of problems are these students going to face? What kind of habits of mind do we want to cultivate in this classroom? And I would say that the kinds of problems that these students are going to have to deal with is they'll have to wrestle and resolve ambiguities. They're going to have to... Uh, 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 filter relevant from irrelevant information. They're going to have to basically overcome failure and learn from their setbacks, but they're going to mostly have to be willing to take risks and not be afraid of failure, like Ken Robinson said. So what I would like to do in the remaining time is actually show you a couple of students. This is what we call as coaches standing in front of the class, or standing to the side, our game day film. You're seeing a student right now who's trying to solve a problem. It's a problem in pattern recognition. And the main thing you should be taking away is that she's proceeding with great confidence. In fact, she submits what was a reasonable guess, but she gets it wrong on the first try. 
without much hesitation, she immediately goes back and says, well, if that was wrong, there must be a better solution. And she begins to try to tackle the problem looking for, and she found it right there, a better solution. After a couple of other alternative choices, she examines, she goes back to what was that best guess, and she puts it into the computer, and immediately she's told on the second attempt that she got it right. We penalize her very little for that incorrect mistake. We encourage her to actually uh, take some risks. Here's what she said a couple of weeks before she took that final exam. I just like doing practice problems because I can begin to recognize patterns very quickly. And in fact, that experience that she gains from practice is what builds her confidence and allows her to proceed uh, through that kind of uh, trial that she faced. We allow our students to go out and use all the tools and resources that are available. And in fact, this student came across a word in that problem that actually must have been somewhat puzzling to them, the word Occident. And so he would do what you and I would do, go out and Google the word Occident and find it on Wikipedia site. Now, the answer to the problem isn't on that page, but the student is able to glean something from that page, come back, and with great confidence, which as game day film watchers, we quickly pick up on how the movement of the mouse is going and can spot people who are clearly confident and uh, d purposeful in, in how they're approaching the problem and solve it on the first try. This student absolutely gets it. This class is really more about being confident. It's about learning to uh, solve problems by using reasoning and analogy. And reasoning and analogy is exactly what this last student uh, does. Each time we meet in our virtual classroom, we actually give our, pro our students a problem that they've never seen before, and we ask them to solve it in five minutes. Now, they can use the concepts that we've been talking about in our webcasts and so on, and they use the tools that we've been teaching them to solve these problems. And this student we, uh, is under the gun of the clock with three minutes to go. We can tell from the movements of the mouse and, the move and what they're uh, adding to this, um, to this program that the, com that the student is actually struggling a little bit. It's really that logical guesswork that I mentioned earlier on. And at one minute to go, the student suddenly gets it, and you can quickly see how the mouse movement changes, and the student begins to uh, immediately attack the problem. With 20 seconds to go, the student submits the answer and gets the question correct. It's the buzzer beater example that, uh, that I'm here to show you today. And so um, the computer actually is reading all of that graphical input that was the student uh, the, the put in. It's a, a great wealth of information. It allows us to try to understand what our student is doing. When the student answered that problem, problem correctly. Uh, he was told the solution to this problem uh, required uh, insight and perception. It required reasoning by an analogy, and that's a very powerful concept. And that's what we call a college coaching for training 21st century minds. Thanks a lot.